Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm playing on my Place for Free account. I'm back at it again, trying to spend absolutely not a penny, not a cent, as I try to to max out this account as much as I can. So, just to get everybody up to speed, I started this account a couple of years ago. Now I've played uh, several thousand games on it, and I've never spent any money on the account, and I don't try and use bonus codes or anything that I would be able to get through other means. It's a completely place for free experience to get an idea of what World of Tanks is like, at least for the majority of players. So I'm playing in the Tier 8 Polish Heavy Tank, which is very relevant, at least on the European server right now. You've probably been seeing a lot of them. It is the 53 TP. That's because currently the 60 TP is top of the tree, and so you can get your hands on this vehicle at a big discount. And there's a lot of stock tanks. A lot of stock 53 TPs out there, and you can tell by obviously the amount of hit points that the vehicle has. If it has 1,400, that means it's got the stock turret. If it has 1,450, that means it's got the top turret. Now, the stock version of this vehicle, it's its not the, the worst thing I've ever played. The stock gun on this tank, it, it has a less alpha damage than the top gun. It will have 320 alpha damage, unlike the top gun, which has 420. But I was still able to make it work, even on this account. It was very decent stock, this vehicle, actually, and I was still able to get a reasonable win ratio. Not as high as I can when I've got the thing fully upgraded. And that's because everything about this tank is just really lovely. I enjoy this vehicle very much. I enjoy it on my my on my premium account, on my pay-to-win account, whatever you want to call it, and also on my free-to-play account as well. This tank is a lovely mix of decent mobility, 8 degrees of gun depression, and once you get the top gun on this vehicle, nice pokey alpha damage with pretty good gun handling. One of the big differences when you go from its predecessor up until the 53 TP is that the gun handling is awful on the tier 7 tank. But as soon as you get to tier 8, you've got 0.1 dispersion when you're turning the turret and 0.18 when you're moving the hull, which isn't fantastic, but it's, it's not awful. And that allows you to just keep moving and keep aiming and, well, not, well, to keep moving and to keep firing without having to stop to aim for too much time. The gun handling really is something that's truly lovely on this vehicle. Combine that with eight degrees of gun depression, and you've got the flexibility to do what you want. And I feel like it's just a very nice, aggressive support heavy tank. I'm always thinking about going hold down in this vehicle, always thinking about how I can, not side scrape, but how I can advance the situation and probably try to, to maybe make a play down a, a flank. And so you, right now, even though I'm kind of locked down against this IS-6, I'm immediately thinking, how can I win this game? Because if I sit here, it looks like, to all intents and purposes, that my team are going to get absolutely butchered by the tanks that are towards their north. So my idea was instead, instead of getting camped here by an IS-6, what do I stand a chance of really engaging him unless I hit his Capolas on top of his tank or if I fire premium rounds at his hull? No. What I want to do is go and win one of the flanks. And so I'm making an aggressive play towards the south right now to hope that I can manage to dig these medium tanks out to make sure that there isn't an 87 at the back. And now we also know that we're going to have to dig out the SP-1C who's also clinging around at the back. And these are the plays that you have to make in your more aggressive heavy tanks. It's not enough to sit there against something which is better at side scraping than you. If I was to sit in that location, these medium tanks would advance up towards my Super Hellcat and really I think the game would be over. I've decided to break out to give my team a chance and we're down by six tanks which is a lot and unfortunately I realize in a couple of rounds that I'm actually wasting gold rounds right now. This is very unusual for me to be firing this amount of premium rounds on this account. Although in my defense this game was from yesterday when there was five times experience on the European server and so I wanted to try and get as much as I possibly can. Okay, I got ambushed. Well played by the enemy team. I decide, do I want to shoot the UDES? And I decide instead to shoot the P-43. Why is that? Because I can get the UDES to pull back and the P-43, the PETA, is going to be able to just penetrate the side of my tank every single time. Considering that the PETA had uh, a very decent alpha damage of 240, his reload would be quite long for a tier 7 medium tank. And so I knew that I could kill him first and then deal with the UDES. And that I could probably end up hold down against the UDES. All right, so five kills up in a three versus six scenario. Yeah, this is where you really hope that when you start to spot the enemy team that they're not full on hit points. That's not gonna be the case with the Emil, right boys and girls. Luckily for me, the Super Hellcat manages to take a chunk out of them. And so perhaps there's a, a vague chance that we're going to be able to maybe take the Emil out. He can kill us in a single magazine. He only really has to penetrate us twice actually, considering the, the, the buffed 
Uh, well, that's actually the premium version, but both of the Emils now have 360 alpha damage. So I actually managed to ricochet the Emil once, I penetrate him, and I ricochet him twice, and I immediately think to myself, I'm, I'm never going to win this game if I sit here and I allow all of the heavy tanks and the medium tanks to engage me at the same time. The only chance that I have is knowing that this Emil probably has about a 30 second reload, and so I want to attack him as quickly as I can before he manages to get the reload. And I asked the Super Hellcat to come and join me to maybe get some flanking fire on the mill, but as long as I don't low roll, I should be able to take this guy out. Unfortunately for me, he plays very well and I can't quite depress my gun against the vehicle, and so now I'm going to put one into his hull, and that might have given the vehicle the opportunity to be able to take me on. So now it's about getting up in his face, try and bounce his shells, try and distract him as much as we can. We put one round into him, we pull back, we bounce his third round, and there you go, we shut down the Emil 1951, but unfortunately that 45 TP on the enemy team, the tier 7 Polish heavy tank, puts a good old 341 damage hit into me, and now we are down to two hit points and a dream against a, ha uh, against a full health heavy tank. Alright, so I'm asking the Super Hellcat to see if he can help me, asking the Super Hellcat to see if he's going to be able to get some shots in the 45 TP, or maybe he's going to be able to advance. Luckily for us, we managed to put a standard round there, I believe, through the front hull of the 45 TP, showing you that its armor is not great. And as long as I angle my tank like this, this is where I can really just look after my hit points by keeping my armor as good as it possibly can. If I angle my upper hull here, my armor is actually very good, and I'm hiding my capola on top of the tank, and my turret armor will do well. So the Leo decides to attack us, and even though we've got a damaged gun, we just had to risk it there to see if we could manage to shut him down, and we do. Now up to 4,000 damage and 7 kills. This 45 TP he looks like he tried to actually escape towards the side. I'm going to put a round through the front of his hull. And right now it's about, okay, drive at the tank. But make sure I reverse now so that he doesn't ram me to death. And luckily, we see that we managed to do 22 ramming damage to him, but he doesn't do any to us. So now you'll see that I'm sticking my gun up. Why am I doing this? Because I'm catching his shell with my gun. So I catch the shell from the 45 TP on the gun, which he was aiming for my cupola, and we managed to shut him down. We're doing everything that we can right now to try and make these two hit points work. We find out that the Oni has got the 105 mm gun. He doesn't have the derp gun. That's great for us, because if he had the derp gun, he'll be able to splash anywhere on our vehicle, and we would get shut down very hard. We're wondering if this Oni is going to come around the corner, and I decide now that I'm no longer spotted, why don't I give the slip to the tank? that's on full health and instead try and attack the 87 instead because if I can get rid of the 87 while my super hellcat is still alive then maybe there's a chance that the super hellcat can help me tank team the Oni. That's the dream boys and girls. Two hit points in a dream. Are we going to be able to turn the uh, the two versus six in this scenario now hopefully down into a, a two versus one. Now I'm going to get some shots here into the side of the 87. There we go and I immediately think is the Oni going to be coming around this corner? Uh, to all intents and purposes, yes he is, and he comes around the corner and he actually bounces a high explosive round off the front of our vehicle. That's going to allow us to get one more shell into the 87, but I won't be able to penetrate him reliably. But we still do, we go through the front of his vehicle, and now come on, just one more bounce. What an absolute heartbreak, ladies and gents. And unfortunately, if you thought that our, our super hellcat was going to be a hero here, it's just not the case. Well, our Super Hellcat gave it his best go. The Super Hellcat is going to just get shut down by the Oni towards the latter part of the game. So an absolute heartbreak for me here. And I did check a few of the statistics of my team and the enemy team. Obviously, now that I'm no longer using XVM, I still hunger to find out whether we were actually playing against decent players in the round. And yeah, the Emil 1951 had had a very cracking round until our, our one versus one. And even though this was a defeat, that there still feels like there's something special about being a complete free player in a standard tech tree tank, taking on very decent players in their premium vehicles and coming through with it when you start on half their hit points. But the consolation prize is this was still an ace tanker for the 53 TP and we get a Radley Walters medal for those nine kills. I would have loved to get a Pauls medal on this account if I'd managed to pick up the 10th and a high caliber for the 6,000 damage. We did end up losing a few credits here because I did fire quite a lot of gold rounds in this game. But that's purely because I'm just trying to chase those five times experience games as quickly as possible because I want to be able to get the 50 TP and also the 60 TP hopefully while they're still on discount for the next week or so. So in today's video I really wanted to stress a few things. Firstly that it's very important to always read the map and think about how you can improve your team's position. If I just sat there against the IS-6 I really don't think that we would have been able to even get close to winning this game. 
by using my mobility, using my awareness of when I'm spotted and when I have a chance to be able to make a flanking play and to advance through that front, it really did almost turn it around on my opponents. And the next thing that I wanted to, to showcase is really coming up with a strategy for how you're going to be able to get through a situation when you're outnumbered. It's really not enough to hold back and hope that your enemies will suck when you're towards the, the tier 8, 9 and 10 in the game. It might work at the low tiers, but, but really, towards the top end, the Emil's going to rush in and unfortunately in a vehicle like this, unless you have it fully decked out, you don't really have the, the damage per minute to be able to take on your opponents en masse at the same time. And that's why I came up with the plan of, hey, that Emil, maybe I can manage to get him and take him out before his support comes. And that is how you have to handle these situations. You've got to give yourself a chance and you will never give yourself a chance unless you take your opportunities to be aggressive, to try and isolate your opponents and shut them down one by one by one. And the final reason why I chose this replay is to show you some of the, the micro fights, the 1v1s, the thinking about using your gun to, to protect your cupola, to being, to getting up in the face of your opponent as they're rushing you, but making sure that you're also going to drop back to avoid the ramming damage. While I apologize that I wasn't able to shut down Tony in his own knee at the end of this game, I felt proud of this one because I gave it a darn good go. And when it comes down to it, those are really my favorite moments in World of Tanks. Not when you're just rolling over the enemy team, but when you're pressured, when you're forced to have to try and think outside the box, where every single shot or every single bounce could be your last. That's why I play this game. That's why I still love it after 10 years. So anyway, that's it for today, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. And this week, most of you have voted for the Object 268 version 4. Yeah, probably the most powerful tier 10 tank destroyer in the game. So why don't you come along right now as I showcase the entirety of the tech tree so you can see why this is probably one of the meta picks if you want to go down it and why the 268 version 4 is still packing a win ratio about one or two percent higher on average on the european server than any other tier 10 td and so really looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon